Hello YouTube, this is Mo from tutorials.eu and welcome to a new c -sharp tutorial. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to write and read data from files. Alright, so what is the issue at hand? As a new developer, you might feel a bit uneasy when you write code that access data from outside the scope of your applications like getting data from a web service or reading data from a file. And it's okay to feel like that since a lot of things can go wrong when doing such a thing. So I will be covering two easy ways to read and write data from a text file. All right, so in a new console application project, I'm gonna show you the first method, which is using the stream reader class. And to use that class, I need to first import the system.io namespace. And then I'm gonna create an object of the stream reader class. I'm gonna call it reader in this example. And I'm gonna pass the path of the file that I want to read as a string in the constructor. And I already have prepared this file called dog. And of course it contains my lovely Chiba dog. So I'm gonna give it the path of this dog file. And it's in the C drive directly. And of course, the extension of the file is a text file. All right, so this step can go wrong if this file does not exist, right? So, so I'm going to wrap this code with a try catch clause. And I'm just going to copy my code inside the try block, All right? So I want to read the content of the doc file line by line. So I'm going to just declare a new string variable. I'm going to call it data, which is just like a placeholder for the, the text or the strings that I'm going to read line by line from the doc file. So inside my try block, I'm going to write data equals my reader object dot read line. So this will give me the first line from the doc file. So I need to keep checking whether I've reached the end of the file and that means that I'm reading null. So I need to keep checking whether my data does not equals null. In that case, I'm gonna keep reading and printing the content of the file into the console. So first I'm gonna console.write line the data after that, I'm going to attempt to read the next line using same as the above way, reader dot read line. And once I've reached the end of the file, then the data will be null and then I'll quit the while loop. All right. So in the catch block, I'm just going to print whatever the exception message is. So I'll need an instance of my exception and then I'm going to simply CW the exception object dot message. And this will display information, giving me details about what went wrong in my code. And then I'm going to add a final block, which I'm going to use to handle the cleanup process. In this case, I just want to close my stream reader so that I can open and close the file by another process, for example. But since my reader object is declared locally inside the try block, I can't exit in the finally block. So I'm just gonna declare it outside of my try block so it can be accessed from anywhere. I'm gonna assign it to null in the beginning and I no longer need the class name here. Final block, I'm just gonna close my reader. All right, so now let's try it out. And here is my lovely Shiba. So what about writing data into my file? So instead of using a stream reader, I'm going to use a stream writer. So I'm going to define a new stream writer object. I'm going to call it writer and I'm going to assign it to null. And in the try block writer object access the, the doc file in a similar fashion to the stream reader. I'm just going to pass the same path of the file. All right. So after I'm done reading the content of my file, I'm just going to use my writer object to write into my file using write line and I'm going to pass my data as a verbatim string and it's going to be this lovely hot dog and of course in the final block I'm going to also 
close my writer and let's give it a try of course I'll get an exception that says the process cannot access the file dog.txt because it's being used by a different process or another process because now I have one text writer and one text reader that are trying to access the same file at the same time so you have to actually pay attention to that and the solution is that after I'm done reading the content of my file using the stream reader I'm gonna actually close it so I'm not gonna close it in the, in the finally block I'm gonna actually close it after I'm done reading the content of the file over here and of course in the final block I'm just gonna close my writer and now as you can see this is my Shiba dog that was the original content of my text file and now if I open my dog file I'm gonna find the new dog that that I wrote into my file using my writer object all right that's cool and all but isn't there an easier way to do it well let me show you a more straightforward way using the file class but before that, Dennis wants to tell you about our C Sharp Masterclass. In this video, you'll learn something about C Sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C Sharp developer, then definitely check out my C Sharp Masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C Sharp. So you're gonna learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. All right, so from the file class, there is a static method called read all text, which takes the path of the file. And this method will return the content of the file as a string directly. So I'll just store that in a variable of type string and I'll call it dog string and I'll simply just display the content of the dog string since I'm not using a try catch over here I need some protection code so that my app won't crash so at least I need to check whether this file exists or not so using file dot exists which is the static method that will check whether a file does indeed exist or not and it will take, of course, the path of the file. And only in this case, I want to display the content of my dog file. So let's give it a try. And here is my hot dog. And using the file class, it's even easier to write content into our dog file. So I'm just gonna copy this block of code and I'm gonna modify it a bit. And I'm gonna define a new string and I'm gonna name it a new dog. It's gonna be a verbatim string and it will be a bulldog. Of course, I need a semicolon at the end. Let me fix his head. And now using another static method called write all text. I can write content into my dog text file and I need to give it the path, which we already know. And the string that we want to write into our file, which is our new dog. Cool, now let's run it. And once it runs, let's close the application and check our dog file again. And now you can see our bulldog is there. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you've learned something new, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, the bell thingy, all the good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.